Hey there guys, Rob at OCD Coffee here. I am planning to roast today um, a three pound batch in my two kilogram uh, roaster here. I'm using a Yoshan roaster. Uh, I had a question that came up recently uh, on the uh, YouTube channel that asked me about what kind of gas I use. And uh, just, to give you, uh, just to give you kind of a, uh, just to answer that question, I use LP gas. I don't use natural gas right now because um, because I don't have a gas line running out to my, my garage and which is where I roast. So that's what I'm using now. So just so you know where I'm going right now, um, I've got, I'm going to show you guys what I'm working with here. Um, I am going to attempt to cut back and forth from my, um, from my roaster to my, uh, to also then sharing with you guys, um, my, screen share. I'm going to go back and forth with this. I know that it's going to be maybe a little bit clunky, but I want to show you my artisan uh, layout. Now, this was a previous roast that I did uh, right here. This was a Columbia roast. This is going to be my background. And now I'm going to show you guys how to get set up here. So I'm going to go to my configure. Um, I'm sorry, my roast. I'm going to pick my properties. I've got a whole drop down of different roasts that I've done. I'm going to be doing this Columbia uh, Excelso. And I'm going to be doing – now, I'm going to test this out because I've never done three pounds. So you guys are here for something new. I, I estimate that my 15% roughly uh, in moisture loss is going to put me around three pounds if I use 3.6 pound charge on this roast. So um, as, I, as I go into this – I'm going to show you guys everything that I'm doing step by step. I'm going to try to make this as user friendly as possible. So if you're a roaster and you're working with a machine like this, it should be exciting for you. Um, I have here my 3.6 charge. I'm going to put that off to the side. And so this is, I'm going to show you now, I'm going to cut back and forth with the screen share. Again, this should be very exciting because this is something I wish that somebody had done when I was roasting. So this is what we're going to do. You can notice right here it says 429 degrees. I've been preheating for almost an hour now, okay? Um, and that's what you want to do. You want to make sure that you're always preheating for long periods of time. So I'm going to cut my heat. Well, actually, first, you can see my KPAs over here are set to uh, 1, and that's just for my preheat. Right now is what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my heat up to 4. Because this is what I'm going to want my charge temperature to be on the drop. So I'm going to now cut the heat. I'm going to let it come up a little bit so I have some time. right? I'm going to cut the heat here. And then I'm going to head over to – now I wish that I could do this much faster, but I can't. I'm going to head over to my artisan so you can see it. And you're going to, I'm going to show you what this looks like when I turn this on. It's at 432 degrees. At 420, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit the start on this. Now, hopefully, you can see me in a little box in the corner here. I think you can. Um, I'm going to start the timer on this. Uh, right now, I'm going to start the, the – turn it on. I'm going to get my presets set to 40 air and 4 uh, KPAs. And don't worry that the, the, uh, the lines don't match up for the ROR. I'm going to drop my beans in now. They're going right into the top of the, the hopper, and I'm going to turn the heat on at 400. Once it hits 400, boom, I drop it in for the charge, and then I come on over and I click charge. Got it? I'm going to stop my share now. But you see how you could see, if I'm in screen sharing, I'm not sure that you could see my mouse, but it dropped at 398. That's 400. Um, but you'll see that the lines will match up. Now, this is a previous roast that I did that was also the same Columbia. I mean, a different Columbia, but the moisture levels were about the same, so I'm assuming that my lines are going to be close to similar. However, I'm going to stop this share real quick, and I'm going to go back to the other share so you can see what I'm doing. Um, however, my um, – there you go. Okay. So now I should be on a better roast. Yeah. So um, as I drop, as my temperature drops, um, my roasting curve is going to be different because last time I did a two and a two point nine, and now I'm doing a three point six. So my roasting curve is going to be different, but my approach is going to be the same. Okay. 
And so um, I'm going to start to, I'm, I'm taking a, a page out of Scott Rao's book um, about dropping my gas temperatures. If you have not read Scott Rao's roasting, uh, coffee roasters roasting book, whatever it's called, um, I highly recommend it. It's very informative and super helpful when you're starting out. Um, so now I'm looking for a, a, a turning point, probably in the 1 minute and 45 second range. And we're at a 132 right here. Um, and I'll switch over so you can kind of see and watch the turning point just turned. You see how it's too, well, it's coming, it's starting to slow down now. And at 240, it stopped. And now it's going up, it's going back up. So that's what my, that's what my computer is about to tell me. That's what my artisan is about to tell me. If I cut back to my... If I share my artisan, and I'll leave it here for now so you can see. So you actually, you can see how it says my turning point was 240. It took about a 1 minute and 43 seconds, 42 seconds. And, um, and now I wait, and I keep the heat on for, and you can see right around 3 minutes and 40-something seconds, or 350, I drop the temperature a little bit. Now, I'm probably going to wait a little bit longer because I'm not going to mess with the temp until my my uh, bean temp reaches about 300. That's what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for my bean temp to reach 300 before I start messing with my gauges, okay? And while we're waiting for that to happen, actually what I'll do is I'm going to cut back here so you can see what I, I'll show you what I'm going to physically do. Um, it's a little clunky of a, of a system that I've got going, but um, it's the best that I'm able to do right now, and I think it's going to be super helpful. So you can see my KPAs right now are set at 4, okay? That's 4 KPAs. Now, what I'm going to do is at 300 degrees, when I reach around 300, I'm going to drop that from 4 to about a 3.6. I don't want to ease off too fast because if I do, then I'm going to have too much of a dip, but I also want my ROR to start dropping smoothly again, that's something that Scott Rao talks about is your RRR being a smooth drop. If you have a, if you have a little bit of a uh, dip um, or a crash, he calls it, or a flick, which is an upward tick in the ROR, then you're going to have you know, negative impacts on the flavor of your, of your coffee profile. So I'm at 277 right now. I'll keep this one. Uh, actually, I'll keep the artisan open for you because I think that's going to be more beneficial if you are roasting with artisan, which you all should be. Um, because it makes life a hell of a lot easier. So um, you can see in the bottom there, I missed, or not that I missed anything, but my uh, it says three. I dropped my temp to a three four last time. Again, that was with a different bean uh, charge. It was uh, at two nine, and now this is a three six, three point six pound drop. So I'm gonna wait until I reach around three hundred. I'm at two ninety three, <clears throat> and like I told you, I'm gonna drop this to a 3.6 because I don't want to come down too fast. I'm at 295, I'm going to do 296, 297. I'm going to get ready to make my switch here and I'm going to drop now down to a 3.6. Got it? And I have these all preset. I have these all preset in my um, in my Artisan, and I highly recommend checking out Artisan's website. Uh, Michael um, uh, Herbert created this starter guide for everybody in there about how to get your Artisan set up. And now I generally try to change my bean temp every 25 degrees as my, my uh, and now this is just um, to just try to stay consistent on where I'm, my roast is going. I don't have to necessarily check I don't have to necessarily check. The, the only thing I'm keeping out for right now is my dry end. But you can see in my, in my artisan that um, it's not that important really in terms of the, in terms of the uh, ROR or anything else. I've got a pretty s solid decline right there as you can see. I'm just going to keep an eye on my beans through the viewing um, kind of little hole there, viewing window. And just make sure that I, I just want to record the dry end so I have it for future reference to make sure that if I'm ever doing this roast again, um, at the 229 now, I'm going to bring my, my roast uh, temp down to a 3.4.
and I'm just going to make a mark of that, 3, 4, and I'm going to slowly drop, and I'm going to pay attention to my bean curve here. Oh, I'm having a little bit of an upward tick like I'm flattening out. So let's just bring it down to a solid 3, okay? And I'm going to, again, make a note of that, that I just did that. And hopefully that's, uh, that helps a bit. Now, I've never done this, this, this amount of beans uh, at this specific, like, 3.6. I've never tried this. I've only done 2 pounds and 4 pounds. And 4 pounds has not been, um, it hasn't never, has never gone very well. That's why I'm making my switch over to a 3.6 for a 3-pound yield. I, would having, I was having to do a 4.75 pounds in the drop charge to, in order to yield 4 pounds, right? Because as a roaster, you want to be able to sell exactly what you make. So I don't want to have these random, random uh, amounts of beans that are left over. I'm about 350 now, and now I should be at dry end. And I am, actually. So let's record dry end here. And I maybe missed it by a little bit. And now what you want to pay attention to is, um, yeah, usually dry end is somewhere around 350, so that's good. Because I think, yeah, because I think the last one, you can't really see what the background was. I'm going to now drop down to a 2.8. Take another step down. Because I'm starting to flatten a little bit, as you can see. Just going to try to make sure that I get there. And now what I'm paying attention to now is I'm trying to gauge where my first crack is going to be. And now according to this, it looks like my first crack is going to be around 8 minutes and 30 seconds, roughly, maybe a little bit further. And so right around now, <clears throat> I want to really adjust for that uptick. So I'm going to bring the gas down again to a 325 because there's usually a flick that comes up right before first crack. And I want to try to, I want to, I want to, I want to miss that. And I'm going to see if I can, if you had that up, that flick, then usually you have a crash that immediately follows. And I might not make it. I got to see again. So I'm kind of stepping stone down. My decline looks okay. I mean, I'm, I'm following a straight line here. Getting a little nervous because that last one came up a little higher. So I'm going to just drop now to a two. And I think I'm going to ride the two in until I get to my first crack. Ah, this is looking like I'm having a little bit of an, a, a flick, right? Oh, and there's my first crack, which means I'm probably going to have a bit of a crash. Because usually there's a big increase. And now if I try to lower right now, I'm probably going to have a, I'm going to call first crack right there because usually first cracks around 380 and it's if you can hear it it's starting to kick in and what happens with first crack and this is what Scott writes about and other other roasters write about is there's an explosion of moisture into the into the into the roaster right and now what I'm going to pay attention to is my I'm, I'm looking at my development right now and at 12 percent development I'm going to cut my heat 50 percent so I'm going to go from a two to a one um, but I'm not there yet, and so you, what happens is, is like I was saying, in first crack, there's a release of moisture. That's what's happening. All that moisture is being released, and it drops the bean temp just and the internal temperature of the drum very quickly. And the way to circumvent that is by knowing that there's going to be an uptick and dropping the temp prior to first crack. So I'm having a little bit. I mean, it's not. This is not a terrible terrible roast uh, roasting curve just right now. But you can see how it's dropping quick, right? So this is a little bit of a crash. But I have to stay on it. And I'm up, coming up on 12% here. And I'm now going to cut my temp. And I'm going to, instead of going to, to a 1, I'm going to go to a 1, 2, 5. And I'm pulling, I'm going to pull this out because now I'm going into the temperature's changing. The, uh, the release of moisture is lessening as I develop. So I'm, I'm anticipating that. And now I'm at 16, so I'm going to drop again. I'm going to go to a, basically a 0.8. Because you can see I'm starting to uptick again. And now at 19% or 
18 percent. I'm going to drop one more time down to. I'm basically going to ride it in at a two, at like a like a point two, and see how I do here. I'm finishing up first crack. My temperature's at, at 406. The first crack has ended, and I'm going to cut it and drop it there. I'm going to kill this video. Boom. And show you guys what's happening here. I just dropped everything out. That looks really good, guys. So... I'm going to close this back up and I'm going to do another roast. So I'm just cooling here. I'll show you what we're looking at on the uh, on this share. So now I'm bringing the tent back up for my next roast. I've got my heat back on, but my heat, as you can see, is set really low, so I'm going to have to crank it all the way up. I'm going to bring it up to like a three. Oop, not a four, but like a three, until I get the temp up to my preheat. I'm going to reset, turn off my timer, reset my clock. I keep this little thing on there just so nothing gets pushed and messes up. Um, and I'll show you, actually, now that I've got this little video set up. Oh, hold on a second, I'm stuck. And you can see how that looks. And this is, I pulled this. Here, actually, I'll cut over. This is a little meta stump something here. So I can, uh, rather than uh, sharing, I'll show you guys the line here. I could turn this off. And now I dropped at 405. And that's a good temp to drop um, for a light roast. And that's what I'm looking for. So you could see, remember what I was talking about? This is that little tiny flick and then a crash. Ideally, this line would have looked like this and come straight across and finished around here. But it's not the end of the world, and it might, it might influence, well, it will influence the flavor of the cup, but it's such a minor one that it's not, it's not terrible, okay? Um, so I'm actually quite happy with the way that that turned out, okay? Um, and let's just finish off this conversation here. Um, let me switch over to this camera. Okay, so I hope, that was, I hope that was helpful for you guys. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, this was my first attempt at having a three pound yield. If I, um, if I was gonna run this video longer, I would, uh, I would end up uh, showing you guys. I'm curious how it's gonna come out because I'm gonna weigh it. I weighed 3.6 on the drop, and then I'm gonna weigh it after the fact and see if I actually made my three pound goal. I think I did, I'm sure I did. Um, but uh, yeah, that's it. That's, that was my uh, Columbia Excelso, and um, we'll see how that comes out in my cupping. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to try it. All right, guys, have a great day. I'll talk to you guys later.